All right, so welcome to the very first, very first podcast, Eclectic Musings, for those that don't know that, uh, yeah, they find this and it's not on YouTube, uh, my name is Alan, I've got a YouTube channel, The Eclectic Beard, Eclectic Beard Reactions, uh, Eclectic Beard Gaming, so I've got a little bit of stuff going on, on YouTube, um, and this is just, uh, yeah, I, I, there's all kind of stuff that normally I, I want to either I'll touch on, I just, I, I want to touch on or something of that nature that just, they don't fit the aesthetic of any of my YouTube channels. Um, this one, this is basically just going over the recent vacation that I had because uh, that's something that, you know, nice little way to start things off. Talk about vacation. Um, took an first time ever in my life had a vacation I did not have an itinerary like normally you take and you plan for a vacation you're like all right we're gonna go this place and then we're gonna go this place and we're gonna do this and we're gonna see this and there was none of that crap none and it was freeing as all hell because we just kind of got in the car and went uh, it was so nice and we didn't go to like the normal place at, at least where we stayed the first night it's not normal place you think of for you know, when are you going to go on vacation? We went to Annapolis, Maryland. We didn't, you know, a lot of folks, let's go to Disney World or, you know, let's let's go to the mountains or at least here in the south. That's where everybody goes on vacation is the mountains. I don't care what time of year it is. You're going to Dollywood or you're going to Gatlinburg or you're going to the mountains in North Carolina somewhere. We said to hell with all that. We had planned on going to originally planned on going to universal studios but 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 we got a 16 year old that was going with us we might have had we, we thought for a little bit my 18 year old was going to be going with us uh, then we got a, a nine-year-old and a seven-year-old and we was thinking about it and we were like you know it's it's cool to want to go to places like universal studios but it's the summer and it's satan's butt crack hot so who the hell wants to wait in line for hours? Who the hell wants to wait in line for hours on end? Just to take a ride a ride that you might or might not enjoy. We we figured the hell with that. So we went to we went to Annapolis, Maryland, and the reason why I picked Annapolis, Maryland, or the reason why we did is because number one, you got the eastern shore there, uh, with Chesapeake Bay and stuff like that. Uh, you got you get the eastern shore and then like an hour away um, and strictly mostly just due to I would say mostly due to traffic but there really wasn't any traffic which was another surprising thing but we'll touch on that here in a minute uh, we went to DC so it was like an hour away from DC which is really really nice and that's the other thing like being a DC here on the news Normally they'll show DC and a lot of times you'll see gridlock. We like the craziest thing about the traffic there was like the people that dart in and out of traffic uh, that might have been on drugs or some other mind altering substance. Uh, we had a lady taking just she was pissed. God, she was pissed and doing like a massively. I don't know if it was a power walk or if she was like a half half power walk, half march. Through the middle of the traffic, fussing and screaming. God knows what about because we had the windows rolled nice and tight up so we couldn't hear it. We were like, oh, let's not piss her off any further. Um, so, but there was, it, like the traffic was, it wasn't bad. It, there's was hardly any traffic, which was the most surprising thing, I think. But it was nice. We, we took and we spent a day walking around D.C., and I think it was my kid's first time actually having any kind of interaction, or not so much interaction as much as their first time experiencing uh, seeing homeless people on uh, just right there on the sidewalk or uh, right there in front of Union Station. There's a there's a like large patch of grass, and it's almost like it's a there's a big roundabout. Um, there's a statue and stuff like that. But there's a roundabout and. In this roundabout, in the grassy area, there were people that were homeless that were camping. Um, I say camping; that they they were living there. They were staying in tents, but. Um, it's cr 
crazy. It was, I think it's, that was their first experience with homeless people, but that was one of the things also that you don't see as much on TV. But I'll say this, like you, I don't care what you see on TV as far as the capital is concerned, uh, like the treasury building or um, even like the library of Congress or the Supreme, like none of that stuff gets, sh that gets shown on TV here or there. None of that is done justice as what it looks like and like being right there at it in person. It's it's magnificent. It's just the the majesty of all of it is all inspiring, especially the capital because it's so massive. Number one, number two, you've got the dome or right there above the rotunda. Like it's it's also beautiful. But what struck me is the fact that. A lot of time you see large crowds. We didn't. There was no crowds. There was no crowds when we went, which was crazy. For me, that was one. That, that was a crazy part. Like there was no crowds whatsoever. So we were able. Now all this stuff was closed to take and go into, but we were able to take and go see it without having to take and fight with any crowds, which was really, really nice. Really, really nice. Um, we took and seen the Capitol. We seen Library of Congress. We seen Supreme Court building. We seen the Washington Monument. Um, we seen Lafayette, well, I believe it was Lafayette Square. Like, we seen all this stuff, and there was no, there's no traffic, hardly. Like you didn't have to dodge cars or anything like that crossing the street. It was just wait for the light to turn red, and even then, a lot of times you didn't. Sometimes you would be waiting, and it's like, why are we waiting? We should just go across, but you didn't want to get jaywalking tickets or nothing like that. Even though I don't think they would give us any jaywalking tickets. Um, it was just. That first that that first little bit there was really really nice. We took and left from Annapolis, Maryland, Maryland the very next day because we walked eight eight miles. Now I will say this: if you go to if you go to D.C., take a guided tour. Like get on some kind of get in somebody's car, or you know if you can find somebody like that 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 gives tours and it's not walking, but you can take that kind of guided tour. I highly recommend doing so because walking we walked like eight miles that day. We were all just, we were like, I never want to walk again. Just, you, you don't realize how much walking eight miles in a day on that hard pavement really can do to your feet until after you've done it. You're in the hotel room like, I don't want to move. So we left from there the next day in Annapolis. So we went to Boston and I don't know, man, I, I just think. And so that's the thing, because we woke up the next morning going, all right, where are we going now? We were just like, hey, my wife was like, well, I've always wanted to see Boston. So we just went to Boston. We just, we got in the car, we packed the kids, uh, which the turnpikes there for New Jersey, taking and seeing, you know, parts of Delaware, seeing the, the New York skyline. Like, I wish we'd have had more time and more money and could have went into New York, um, because it's just beautiful from a distance, just seeing the skyline itself and, and some of the tall buildings and seeing the, and seeing stuff like the empire state building right there from the skyline, from the turnpike taking and going on to the George Washington bridge and stuff like that. It's just, it's absolutely, it's beautiful. Um, it's another one of those things that just pictures do not do justice. I don't care if you take the picture. I don't care if you see the picture somewhere, pictures just do not do some things justice. And this is one of them. Um, but going over that bridge and then taking going into uh, Connecticut and one of the other things that you don't realize, especially if you don't live up north, like we drove from South Carolina. One of the things you don't realize is just how mountainous this place, these places are like every, and it might not be so much mountainous as much as it is. There's just granite walls. It seems like here and there that are, are granite hills basically is what it looks like. Cause you got trees growing on top of it, but you see the granite showing through. So that's one of the things that you don't really, you don't have a sense of being some like being from the South. You just think everybody up North is, you know, Oh, there's no, you know, they're all thought of city, uh, city folks, but it's beautiful, beautiful country. And that's one of the things I think, I think more people need to take and travel up North, especially if you live from, if you live in the South. So that way you can kind of get some preconceived notions out of your head. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of people won't, admit to but that's one of the things like get those preconceived notions out your head dude like for real because being being from the south that's all we've you know oh go back up north or oh they're just city slickers they're from up north and blah, blah, blah. 
dude there's like so many trees up there it is crazy like there's there's more trees there almost than there are here in this uh where i live in south carolina like i live in the middle of a national forest but i drive 10 minutes and you can't find a tree to save your life so i mean that's that's one of the things it's just it's so crazy because you don't consider that being from here um like it it's so so green and so beautiful and i think that's one of the most stunning and startling things to really see is just how beautiful it is uh how like I said, it seems almost mountainous. That's just that, how much the hills and, and and like it looks like people live on the side of the mountains is what it looks like a lot of time. You take a look up off to the side, uh, some of these exits and stuff like that off the interstate, and you see like hills. It's like they're they're like people living on the side of mountains there, like they do in Tennessee, but you're in Connecticut or crossing into Massachusetts. The same thing, Massachusetts. We. So we went to Boston, and Boston is, I could move to Boston. I'm not even going to lie. I could move to Boston. That's how beautiful that place is. Like, just the architecture, um, the way that the neighborhoods and stuff like that are set up, the way the roads are. Granted, the people in Boston cannot drive to save their ever-loving lives. Like, traffic laws are suggestions up there. Red light, you still got like 10, 15 seconds to go through that mode. I'm not even going to lie. And like that was one of the, that was also one of the things that was crazy for me was <laughs> being in the lane to go straight and having some fool take a pull up, pull up next to you in a turn lane. And then when the light turns green, they take and slip through and they take and get in front of you in the lane that you're in the lane for to go straight. But they did it from the it's crazy it's it's just a just a driving up there is is crazy it was fun to see um we got to see fenway park uss constitution we went to the uss constitution museum uh the second day we were there one thing i do think that the uh, north has that uh is really a pain in the butt on the interstates is slowdowns like the slowdowns from either Rex or just I don't know why people will slow down but they just slow down in the middle like it seemed to be no freaking reason there's no construction going on nothing and it's just you go from 70 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour within a mile and a half span and you'll be like that for five miles and then it opens back up and there's no rhyme nor reason for it but but at least you got some pretty stuff to look at while you're you know in a slowdown I, I have to give them that um but yeah it, the second day in boston or we we were supposed to get in boston at like three o'clock in the afternoon on sunday or no on saturday we were supposed to get there like three o'clock in the afternoon due to the slowdowns between maryland and massachusetts it added almost another five hours to the trip so we got there at like six no added three hours so we were supposed to get there at like 2 30 3 o'clock we wound up getting there at like 6 30 almost seven come into the financial district which you're not expecting or at least we we didn't plan ahead far enough on um that's one of the one of the things not having an itinerary sometimes things just you, you don't plan so therefore uh whatever happens happens and three hours of slowdown we come in and we we're like, all right, cool. We still want to see Boston. Let's take a drive into Boston. And you don't plan on, all right, let's take this route into Boston. So we went into the finance. We took and come into the fi financial district off the interstate, which was interesting because they've got a tunnel. And it's like 400 lanes that merges, or at least it felt like 400 lanes. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm not used to taking and, you know, having a tunnel, driving into a tunnel where lanes merge. Uh, and it's so having to take and navigate that and then hopping out of the the tunnel and going into the heart of the city are oh, you got skyscrapers above you which was awesome to see because we don't have skyscrapers here like i think the tallest building in charleston is like 30 or 40 stories like it's it's not big at all comparatively um so that that was crazy that was crazy and then there was a game there was a game that day that had just gotten over with so You've got people that are leaving Fenway Park and they're just in droves taking and coming across the crosswalks. And it's like, holy crap, like 60, 70 deep. And you're not used to seeing that. But that was pretty cool. All of the same go. 
like it was it was just I don't know it was so it was so cool and so crazy so our first day in Boston unfortunately we wind up eight o'clock fighting and struggling to find ourselves a hotel and we finally found one about 35 minutes outside of Boston next morning we wake up and it's pouring down rain it's like man are you kidding me so we went to the USS Constitution uh, in the museum and we seen a little bit of the the waterway there or the Boston Harbor we seen a little bit of that and unfortunately it was it, we weren't able to stay longer I wish we could have but we wind up taking and going back to Connecticut and then coming back home and it, it <coughs> excuse me now one of the things I will say one of the things I will say from now on whenever me and my family go on vacation we've done decided that this is how we're going to do our vacations from this point forward is not have an itinerary and I, and I think and I think it's something everybody should try now it's not going to be for everybody but I think it's something everybody should try because if you don't have an itinerary you don't hold yourself down and really realistically just being honest from a personal standpoint a lot of stuff I do is by fly by the seat of my pants so kind of doing the vacation the same way um, it was even more freeing because there are things you I do have to plan in life as much as I try to take and do things fly by the seat of my pants because I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense to make to make plans um, like unless you've got like a doctor's appointment and stuff like that because you never know what tomorrow holds you never know what the next second holds so I've always taken that approach with things as, as far as life is concerned now granted you do have like overall okay especially my YouTube channels are like, okay I'm gonna I want to do this 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 uh, for two channels uh, my, my main channel eclectic beard reactions it's like anything beyond my wildest dreams as far as the success of it uh the eclectic beard again it, it, it having having a plan at least for that at least for those two things you've got to have like a mindset of okay once i hit this i want to do this and then this and this is where i want to see things but putting that in action is still very fly by the seat of the pants for me so when i say when I say, as far as life is concerned, I'm very much fly by the seat of my pants, um, because even with the way things I try to plan out, they don't they don't quite they haven't worked out as far as the uh, channels are concerned. But there's always, all right, well, I'll take and try this at a different point in time or whatever. Anyways, and I'm getting off track here. Sorry about that. I think in life, like you, you, it's good to have plans. Right, you 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 want to take and okay. By the time I'm 25, I want to do this. By the time I'm 30, I want to do this. By the time I'm 30, so that's one thing, right? That's one thing. What I'm saying is like in your day to day in your day to day life, you, I don't think it makes a whole lot of sense. I mean, you've already got for the most part people have jobs and stuff like that, so you've got eight to five or nine to five. That's all. It's already laid out because you're going to be at work. Past any of that, like there's really, in all honesty, there's no reason to have any kind of plan. As far as like I'm going to do this or this or this because you don't know what things are what's going to happen one second to the next so you can have a plan but is it going to take and work out the way you want or you're going to have to take and make modifications because you have to make modifications to that plan within well, that original plan didn't make a whole didn't it didn't work out the way you wanted to I think it's better a lot of times just to all right, so I know I, I've got to be at work at this time, and I get off of work at this time, like before work and after work. Just let every whatever happens happens, dude, because things are regimented enough. Like that, and the only reason why you you're controlling that nine to five is because you've got to pay bills. Um, where you don't have to, take, you know, where it's not where it doesn't concern your job, like outside of your job, don't have plans. Just let things happen as they happen, and then roll with the punches not I, I think a lot of time i think you'll learn i think people would learn more that way than having a regimented detail of you know a regimented plan on things because then you then you learn to take and deal with obstacles you learn to take and deal with um 
with bad experiences that come along, you learn to deal with things without the frustration of being like, well, this didn't work out. Um, and that's kind of the mindset we hit. So going back to the vacation, that's kind of the mindset it was with the vacation was let's not have a plan because if we make plans, number one, those are going to go to shit because we got kids. And even, even without that, you just never know what tomorrow is going to hold. So, you know, or what the next minute is going to hold. So let's just, let's wing it. Let's wing it. And it was so freeing and it was so fun and the kids had fun. And I, I think I definitely recommend everybody to try at least once and see how it fits you. Have a vacation where you don't have any plans. Like you just pick a spot on a map and be like, we're going here now. And you head that direction. And whatever happens between point A and point B, your point A to point B might wind up being point A. And then before you hit your original point B, well, that turns into point C and then point B turns into something else. And even the point C can turn into something else. So you you just, I, I think that right there, the, the freeing of that and having the ability to whatever you decide in the moment, in the moment, because that's what life is about, in the moment. We can have all the best laid plans. And if something happens in the moment, it can lay those plans to waste. So, yeah, hopefully this made any kind of sense to y'all. Um, hopefully you enjoy the very first podcast episode. Uh, I'll be coming back. I'll be doing this again next week. So, yeah, y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.